Hello everyone, welcome to Crafty Garden. My name is Stephanie and you're joining me in the mountains of Vermont where I live with my husband, our two dogs, and our cat. Today I have some works in progress to share with you and I have um, a little bit of fleece talk and um, yeah, maybe a couple other little things, but my hope is to have this be a little sh a bit of a shorter video. So um, I hope you enjoy and uh, I just want to say hello to um, all of my new subscribers and um, I've never really gotten into um, the milestone that I surpassed. So this is my 70th video that I've uploaded. I number my videos from um, chronologically so that you know the order sequence but I don't really call them episodes because sometimes I have tutorials or sometimes I have different styles of video. So I just number them all. And anyways, I have more than surpassed a thousand subscribers and I'm kind of, um, you know, I think I was nervous when I first passed a thousand that it was just going to go back down because it tends to waffle. Um, and I don't pay a lot of attention to it. Um, I just do this for fun, but, um, it is, um, surpassed <laughs> enough that um, I feel like it's worth mentioning and I wanted to say I have a hair in my face I have um, in my lipstick I just wanted to say thank you for those of you who have been around whether you've been around for a long time or you're new um, and say welcome and thanks for spending some time with me okay so <laughs> all I want to do is talk about my new project I am just in love with my new project so we're at the tail end I'm at the tail end of my February break and uh, I'm a school teacher so I have just been enjoying this time off and really relaxing and staying at home and just um, yeah t doing some self-care and um, just enjoying my time so that's not totally true I have been working on some um, career related things um, actually pretty hard. I'm, I'm kind of proud of myself for making myself do the, um, the stuff that you don't always want to do. But, uh, <laughs> we went down to Green Mountain Spinnery and I picked up this bright, happy yellow yarn and cast on for a new project. And I'm just dying to share it with you all. And it's been knitting up super quick. Um, yeah, so my goal is to do a little update um, and not have an hour long video. So why don't we just start sharing some things and maybe I'll save the best for last. Or I, I can't say it's the best, it's just the thing I'm the most excited about right now. So um, I'll share that for last. So let's, uh, I'm gonna update you guys on two projects that I've been working on that I am like patting myself on the back because um, two projects that I have um, I feel like accomplished something that I'm really terrible at doing. So one is the, oops, wrong side, <laughs> Seferl cardigan. And this cardigan, um, I had talked about visiting Tammy of Wing and a Prayer Farm and um, picking up some more yarn from her and getting to visit with her and see all of her animals. And she lives in Vermont and I live in Vermont, so not close to each other, but, um, it was still enjoyable to get down there. So the update that I have is that I finished a sleeve. <laughs> and I am just terrible at finishing sleeves, at picking them up and knitting them. It's just, you know, and I was thinking about this the other day, like what is it about casting on a new project um, that is so enticing and, and you don't, you know, you put all this energy into it and you're so excited to do these things. Even if they're challenging, um, you, ju you just want to do it. But when it comes to certain um, steps, it's, it just seems like a, the equivalent of washing the dishes. <laughs> so um, <laughs> anyways, I feel like, you know, I washed the dishes, I knit a sleeve. <laughs> um, anyways, so I've been like patting myself on the back for getting a sleeve done. And I'm going to pick up for the other one as soon as I finish. Um, I'm using the same size needles for two projects. So I'm going to finish um, a sleeve on another one. And then I'll pick up for this one. Um, so I guess I can 
try it on for you guys. It is um, thick and uh, very like silky uh, mohair feel. It's 50% mohair and it's got um, this yarn is Thelma and Louise by Wing and a Prayer Farm and you can't really get this specific yarn right now. You can get her Thelma and Louise yarn, but it's different. The, the, the way it was um, spun at the mill uh, was a little bit different than um, the way that this was spun. So this is um, gorgeous and I love it. It's got this really warm, um, cozy kind of feel to it, but at the same time, it has mohair and cormo and long wools, and the long wools give it a not quite um, let lopey feel or lopey feel, but it, approaching lopey feel um, with some of the long wools that are in here. So I'll just stand up so you can see about where it um, falls. I did like kind of a, not a cropped length, but this is my shirt, so. Like a pretty standard length with the back and I've showed that before so um, there's my steak that I added the pattern does not call for a steak and I just added one and I cast off the steak um, before the ribbing or right around the ribbing and it looks a little wonky right there but <clears throat> it's going to be cut and folded in so um, it doesn't it's not anything anybody will see so yeah, um, this is the, now, I've just now done um, the same thing twice in a row, um, adding steaks to cardigan patterns that aren't written for that. So yeah, this is my Sephiroth, and um, I think what it's going to be is like a great um, layering piece to wear over either a t-shirt or maybe even a long sleeve shirt if I really want some warmth. If I'm going out in the, uh, the cold weather or something, I think it'll be a great layering piece um, to have and be really, really warm and cozy. So that's it for my Sephora. And now I'm going to show you my um, host cardigan. And um, I do know that <laughs> when Ellie of Scandier Knits says host cardigan, it's, I'm saying it close, but not quite. There's some extra little um, sounds in there that my American accent just doesn't quite do right, but it's close to host. Um, so yeah, I picked up, not only did I knit a sleeve on this, I also picked up for the second sleeve. And so <laughs> I feel like I'm actually doing the things that I'm notoriously bad at skipping or putting off you know, like instead of just knitting a sleeve and finishing a project, I just want to go do something else and end up with five or six almost sweaters or almost cardigans. So I'm really proud of myself for actually um, sticking to it and trying to really finish these projects. Um, so this is a cropped cardigan with lace detailing. And Ellie just came out with a chunky sort of version of this where she has just one repeat of the pattern instead of two. And it's a sweater and it's like a chunky weight, I think. Um, and I don't think I would knit that. Um, I think there's just, I think one is enough for me, but if you guys are interested, um, I think it's a new pattern right now. So yeah, it's this lovely rusty orange. It's over dyed. Uh, it's like a gray that's been over dyed. This is um, Rauma, uh, Rauma Phenol Garn, and it's um, one of the newer colors. Uh, it's their new orangey color, and I bought this from the Wooly Thistle, and a few um, episodes. Her she has video um, shop updates, um, maybe four or five episodes ago of the of those she had um, showed off all of the new colors and that's where I had first seen it and wanted to get it 
So this yarn is super duper lightweight. That's one thing that I'm always like marveling at when I'm working on this is just how lightweight it is. Um, it's got, um, I mean, compared to, to some wool, it's soft, but compared to this basket of Cormo back here, it feels scratchy. So it depends on your um, personal ability to withstand more scratchier wools, whether you think this is soft or not. I think some people would say that this is very soft, um, and I think some people would find this scratchy. If you are a, you know, merino only kind of person, you would find this scratchy. But um, I really like it, and I'm excited to try and get it finished. I do feel like um, I'm starting to get excited about spring colors, and I do tend to be drawn to colors um, seasonally. And here in Vermont, we do get four very um, different seasons. We do get a true um, spring, summer, fall, and winter. And so I do tend to find my choices of colors and my mood and things do swing and sway with the seasons. So hopefully next time I see you guys, I will have finished this sleeve and then maybe have picked up the sleeve for the Sephiral because I am sharing these needles between the two projects. They are both knit. I'm knitting them both with US 7s, uh, four and a half millimeters. So super excited about this. I think they are both going to be so beautiful. Um, I guess since a lot of, I've got like so many projects crammed into this one bag. I'll just show the other thing that's been crammed into this bag. I want to get another one of these. I think I need to like lint roll this one, but this is a friend supply company bag and I have just been cramming all of my projects into here and um, realizing that maybe I might want to get another one. There's this, I'm sure you've seen it or maybe you've seen it, raspberry kind of burgundy-ish but more raspberry um, colored bag that I really 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 love the color so much it's so my color and go lay down go lay down and um, yeah I um, I use this so much that I think it would be reasonable for me to get another one because I do love this I love this size so much um, so anyways there's my little uh, I think my mom, I think I've talked about this before, my mom, I think my mom gave me this to teach is to touch lives forever, and it's a little addition with the apple, and yeah, and then this adorable make wear mint, love wool, and my shave them to save them badge. I had a, the store that I bought this at was um, Black Mountain Yarn Shop in um, North Carolina, Black Mountain, North Carolina, um, and somehow that uh, pen popped off and she gave it to me for free so I actually felt really terrible I don't know how or where it must have snagged on something and just came right off <laughs> um, I'm laughing because my um, dog is like grunting on the floor <laughs> she's just so funny like she sighs and she grunts and she huffs and she puffs and she <laughs> she just makes like the funniest sound sometimes She's very expressive. You know, she can't talk, but that doesn't mean she won't tell you what she thinks. <laughs> um, so I'm not going to do too much, spend too much time on this one. This is the um, Hansel Hap, and I'm making the full version, which they're showing a photo of a baby here, but it's a shawl that can be used as a blanket. I'm knitting it as a shawl, and I'm knitting this with hand spun. This is... Cordale, Cordale, from um, My Wool Mitten, Serenity Farms, and she has a podcast um, also called My Wool Mitten, and her name is Carrie, and I love Carrie, and I love um, seeing her little sheep updates, and um, I know she's been having some issues lately with um, the internet connection and being able to upload things. But um, if you want to go back, if you haven't watched her stuff, you can go back and watch her old episodes and her bucket talk and meet her sheep 
and uh, I really recommend her channel. So anyways, I bought one of our fleeces this past summer and we did, uh, me and um, the Soulful Spinner, um, Lisa, did the Fiber Prep Summer Camp and we co-hosted it and I think um, we had plans to do it again this coming summer. Um, so we'll see as that gets closer, but that's when I prepped all of this um, fleece and um, eventually spun it. So these two grays here are from Hilda and this one is from Weezer and uh, she gave me this very generous sample of Weezer. Um, I would almost like to get more of this color. Um, so maybe if she has some, um, next time she shares, maybe I'll look into getting one of her other colors, maybe a different brown or something. But anyways, I had started the lace on this project. So I put this uh, Vermont Sheep and Wool Festival um, removable stitch marker on there. And I want to get, I want to buy one of those kits that has like a hundred of these little light bulb stitch markers um, because they're removable and I don't have a lot of them and I'm finding myself constantly needing them and wanting them. So I think I'm going to have to probably place an order for one of those little um, pouches of them. But I started the lace and I actually had started knitting this um, dark color. But then I had found, I kept having issues with the stitch count and <clears throat> I'd check it and then it would be off and I'd fix it and I'd check it and it'd be off. And I was like, what in the world is going wrong? What, you know, and I felt like I had, it was keep having to like, you know, pick up an extra stitch to kind of fudge it and make it be the number of stitches that I needed. And then I, that happened two or three times. <clears throat> so I ended up ripping out all of the brown that I knit on and decided, nope, I'm just gonna rip it all out. I'm gonna fix it. I'm gonna find the root of this issue. <laughs> I'm gonna fix it properly and I'm gonna do this right because this is gonna be such a beautiful um, shawl when I do I'm done. And I think it's gonna be like an heirloom piece. Um, and you know, although I'm making it as a shawl, if I did have a baby, I would absolutely use it as a baby blanket. And um, so I just want to do it right. And <laughs> um, the lace was so pretty and I was really, um, besides the frustration of my stitch count continuing to be off, I was really enjoying it. Okay, so um, new projects new new projects so the first new project um, you can see it that Selbu mitten book right there I had talked about that maybe two episodes ago I think um, and I had talked about um, kind of writing a recipe for a glove that I want to make and so I did do that I wrote a recipe and then I spent probably a day um, designing and hand um, filling in graph paper, knitting graph paper for the design that I wanted. And the most time consuming parts was trying to figure out how to arrange the gusset for the pattern. Since this was my first time doing this kind of design, I really didn't know how to um, on the graph paper how to put in this this thumb gusset <clears throat> and so I ended up drawing and erasing and drawing and erasing um, multiple times <laughs> um, you know trial and error so um, I ended up <laughs> designing these gloves and I just was before I got my new yarn this is like pretty much um, a lot of what I've been working on and I just think they're just so, so beautiful. So I'll talk about the yarn. It's my own hand spun yarn. So this is um, all Shetland. And originally my plan was to just um, use the, the black and the white. But this white, um, so both this black and this white 
were coarser um, parts of the two fleeces. So this is Gumdrop's fleece and this is Nala's from Nala's fleece and I had used the most of their their wool, um, the softest, nicest parts of the wool, went into making my Shetland color work project, which I won't be talking about today, um, uh, just because I haven't done enough to bother sharing it. But <clears throat> so the leftover uh, wool from the fleeces, a little bit coarser, and um, so you know they they'd be more hard wearing. And anyways, my thought was I would use some of that wool to make gloves. Uh, but unfortunately, this white um, was, I don't want to get into like too much details, but the diameter of the, because the, the wool is a little bit coarser, the diameter, the micron count is um, higher. Um, this, even though it was spun the same way as I spun, no, that's not true. I spun it on my new wheel, and that was part of part of the thing. My new wheel, I I I haven't figured out quite how to. Um, it puts it spins really fast, and it puts a lot of twist into the yarn, and so I'm having to adjust from my lindrum, which spins, you know, even the fastest rate on my lindrum doesn't touch what my new wheel can do. So, trying to find that new normal with my 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 new wheel. But anyways, <laughs> so this white yarn was a little, just a little bit thicker and also um, coarser. Um, it's got a firmer hand and it just, it knits, it knits up differently. And um, the higher the micron count, the, um, well, let's say it the other way, the, the lower the micron count, the, the more yardage you'll get out of the same amount of weight of wool. So this Cormo, that's super fine back here, well, um, if I spin that, if I spin 100 grams of that, and I spin, if I if I wanted to spin 100 grams of this, I would have more yardage with the Cormo than with this um, higher micron Shetland. So, <clears throat> and that's related to the Bradford count. If you're interested in spinning yarn, it's too much detail for most people. That's why I don't want to go into it too much. But if you're interested in the Bradford count and kind of how that works, you could research that or look it up. Um, I don't know a ton about it, but I know just that much. At any rate, <laughs> I didn't, I don't have enough of this white, this off white to knit two, um, two gloves. So I pulled out, this was the very first yarn that I spun on my um, new wheel, my Shacked Reeves. And it's quite a bit finer and it's a lot softer than this is. These are like, you know, polar opposites for Shetland. This is coarser, thicker, heavier micron. This is fine and soft and um, both beautiful and useful, just totally different feels, completely, feel completely different. So I pulled this out. So, um, you know, I went from, I was gonna make a traditional black and white Selbu style um, glove to this black, white, and gray. And I'm so happy about it because I had said something on Instagram about like sometimes plan A doesn't work, but plan B is even more beautiful. And that's exactly how I feel about these colors. <clears throat> I don't know why my voice is cracking. But um, yes, so I picked out each of these different parts of this glove. And I won't go into it because I did almost exactly what I said I was going to do on that episode. I have that book as the cover um, thumbnail shot for that episode so you can go back and check that out if you want. But um, I did the cuff that I said I was going to do and I had talked about this pattern, um, a basic side stitch because all Selbu, um, all Selbu mittens and gloves have a side panel like similar to this whether it's different there's a lot of different ones but they all have this sort of side paneling that breaks up the front and the back and then a different pattern for the palm 
and I don't know what it is about this pattern. I'm trying to get the needles out of the way. I had to make sure that this thumb was put in the right place um, before I was like willing to knit further. And so I had taken out the little scrap yarn that I had knit in there and just made sure that it would fall in a good place. And it did, and I kept going. So anyways, this palm pattern, um, I was super attracted to this palm pattern in the book, and I have no regrets. Um, it's a much more complicated pattern than like a basic checker pattern or... Um, yeah, there's some really simple basic patterns that would be much um, less work to knit, much more easy to memorize. This isn't really easy to memorize at all, <laughs> but it's so beautiful. And I just, I don't even know what it is about it that I find so appealing, but I just think it's so pretty. So I designed the thumb too, and um, I have plans to kind of mirror um, this almost heart shape on the thumb and I'm thinking I might do different thumbs on each glove like have them be mostly the same but like have a different pattern on the inside or just change them up a little bit so that they look slightly different and then I had to add um, some kind of um, in-between pattern between the palm the the hand the front of the hand and the the fingers that I'll be knitting um, I needed just a little bit more um, before I started the fingers, so I designed this myself. This little kind of arrows going off in different directions with a diamond in the center, and I really think it's just so pretty. And I couldn't be more happy with this glove. I, I've loved every minute of making it and designing it, even the like trial and error of trying to design it and figure out stitch counts and placement of thumb gussets and all this stuff. But the next big challenge is knitting all of the fingers, which I've never done before. I've never actually knit a glove pattern before. And so of course I'm designing my very first one. <laughs> so that's the challenge that I'm facing right now. And I'm a little bit um, nervous about it, but I think between like looking at that book and other patterns and like free patterns on Ravelry, and I have a Shetland pattern that I'm going to look at too. I think I'll be able to figure it out. Okay, so I was talking about my glove when I stopped the video. Um, so last thing I'll say before I put this away is that um, I'm having to figure out how to, not only how to knit the fingers on the glove, how to divide up the stitches, um, but I'm also having to figure out um, how to create the design um, for each finger. So the back side, I think, is going to follow this pattern um, as best as possible. It's going to look like this just extends right up into the fingers. But um, on the front, there will be a slightly different pattern for, I think, all of the fingers, but maybe not actually for I think so for the pinky and the middle will definitely need their own um, pattern uh, it can be a very similar pattern but the different you know um, amount of space between or um, maybe one is a little bit longer or a little bit wider so just uh, whatever pattern I, I put on the fingers might be slightly different the the knitting directions and the design will be slightly different for each one. I think my index and my ring finger, um, actually I might be able to do the same pattern for these two um, because those fingers are nearly the exact same length. And um, I've already designed the thumb, um, unless I make some last minute changes, which is highly likely. Because <laughs> as I knit things, I'm like, oops, nope, that doesn't quite work. Um, or I just find like something better. But for the most part, I've got it figured out what the design will look like. I just have to make it work for the different lengths um, of the fingers. So um, I think that's going to be quite challenging, trying to work that out, um, having no experience 
knitting gloves. I don't think knitting gloves is particularly challenging, but it's challenging to design something that you've never knit before. <laughs> um, and only I would do that. <laughs> so, um, I, I was kind of thinking that um, it might be cool if <laughs> I would, I might like to um, attempt to write this uh, pattern up and chart it and possibly sell it. Um, I've thought that a few different times with different things. This seems more reasonable um, and I think it would be okay to sell this as my own pattern because um, like Ellie of Scandier Knits, she's created mittens that use very um, historical, um, well-known um, patterns that are used. Um, you know, it's not like somebody's, um, it's not like I, I took a pattern from somebody else. Um, I took a very well-known used um, parts of patterns that are used um, historically. I don't think I said that very well, but um, at any rate, like the, the, the star, the Selbu star is seen in Shetland knitting. It's seen in um, even outside of knitting. It's very, um, it's used all over ready to wear garments, um, at any, any rate. So I think it's, uh, it's not like I took somebody else's exact design. Um, I just took different parts of, um, you know, well-known, um, Selbu Norwegian, um, designs and made them into a pattern that is my own. So the whole thing together is my own design. This exact cuff with this exact palm pattern and, um, this hand pattern, this is absolutely 100% my own design and... Um, this I did, this is very traditional, um, but just the way I've put it together makes it my pattern, I guess. Um, this side band is a very, very basic traditional side band, um, and the fingers will have um, something reminiscent to this part of this, um, it's a goat's horn rose, or I've been calling it goat's horn rose. Um, pattern. So this part right here, these um, kind of um, the body of, it's almost like a heart. Um, I'm going to kind of mimic that kind of idea in the fingers. So yeah, I think it's going to be really fun, but also very challenging. Um, designing this, um, sketching it all out, um, Designing the thumb gusset, figuring out how long I wanted to knit it, where to insert it, what pattern to insert here. Um, designing like the parts that are going to go onto the thumb. All of that. Um, it was both very fun and challenging. So we'll see how I progress. I hope to figure out how to do the, I think, I think how it works is that I'm going to do the pinky first because I'm at the place where the pinky would fall and I guess I could I was gonna move on to something else but maybe I'll talk about that so I think what I'll do is take a certain amount of these stitches right that I've already knit and slip those onto a different needle and um, take a certain amount of these stitches here and put that on a different needle and then I will be knitting those two and then I'm not sure if I have to join if I have to cast on any stitches for in between or not um, so I've got to look at some different resources for different <laughs> patterns um, and see what they do and how they pick up stitches for the fingers and then I will kind of um, plan my plan how to do, how to pick up the stitches and how to join them all from there. But I do think I will probably start with the pinky first 
and then I don't know if it matters if, if you have to do them in order from then on. Like, I really don't know. So I'll be figuring out all of that. Um, this knit up pretty quickly, and I think that was partly because I was just super duper excited to work on it. And um, I did a lot of the pattern drawing and writing um, uh, up until this point right here. Um, so I did all of the work for the thumb and for this um, when right after I finished the cuff. So um, I was just able to knit it. So this was like really portable. I would pop the yarn in my purse and be able to carry this around me with me and knit in the car. And so um, any chance I had to work on this, I was working on it. And I think that's why it knit up so quickly. Okay, so wish me luck with the fingers because I think I'm going to need it. <laughs> um, the last thing for knitting projects is um, my new project. So my Felix cardigan is, uh, and I just picked up yarn for a Felix cardigan and I cast it on um, two days ago. Oh yeah, it was the tw 20th. Um, okay, so Thursday we drove down to Putney and um, we, when we drive to Putney, because um, we've done it a few times now, we like to stop in Chester, Vermont, and we also stopped at the Vermont Country Store for the first time, and um, I've lived in Vermont for over um, nine years nine years now and um yeah i i've never been to the vermont country store so it was really nice um it was a nice store really big store um and it had a lot of interesting little things in there i found a a, a cat though you know that i think it, um, they had it in the simpsons and watching that growing up i remember that um uh, the black cat with the tail that swishes as the clock goes around. They had one of those, and I really wanted one, but it was a lot more expensive than I was willing to spend, um, especially after buying this yarn. <laughs> so, um, okay. I have seen so many people knitting this cardigan that at first I was like, it's kind of nice, I, I like it, but I, I wasn't, you know, ready to, to buy it or to work on it. But then I just kept seeing Felix sweater after Felix sweater after Felix cardigan because there's two different patterns. They're the exact same thing, um, but she sells them separately. Um, uh, of course, I, I, I would rather that she just give you the instructions for both because it's just the difference of um, the button band is, and and knitting it uh, in the round versus knitting it back and forth. Um, but I don't know, that was her choice. Um, it just would be nice, like, if I made this cardigan and then I wanted to make the sweater, if I, ha if I had already purchased this pattern, not having to repurchase the sweater pattern. Um, I mean, I'm sure you could just figure it out yourself if you have enough experience, but um, it would be nice if it was just included. <laughs> the, okay, complaints aside. I have been really enjoying knitting this. So let's talk about the yarn. So um, Green Mountain Spinnery is in Putney, Vermont. And um, we live, it's over an hour and a half away um, from us. And so it was quite the drive. Um, and my husband wanted to stop in Chester at the um, Scottish pub that's in Chester, Vermont. And if you're anywhere near Chester, Vermont, I highly recommend the Scottish pub. It has um, Scottish beer on tap, and um, it has um, just really great food. And the owner is from Scotland. His wife is not. His wife is American, I believe. Um, but the food is so good. And he has, um, like, um, traditional desserts and he has um, stews and soups and they all have like really great ne names. Oh, I got uh, the cockaliki soup and I was like, what is that? And he was like, it's chicken and leek. I was like, oh, 
That makes so much sense. <laughs> and it was the most delicious soup I've ever had. I think it's the most delicious soup I've ever had. Um, it was extremely rich, super creamy, so tasty. And I was like, we need to learn how to make cockaliki soup. <laughs> um, so we didn't do much in Putney. There's a little um, co-op um, health food store um, almost across the street. Not exactly, but um, if you've been there, it's very close to the um, to the spinnery. There's a little um, co-op where you can get lunch or groceries or um, some different kind of beverages. Like they had a ginger, a hot ginger tea, which I got. Um, my husband got a coffee and um, we got some snacks and things. We found these natural, like more natural pork rinds with no antibiotics. So we had, I had pork rinds for the first time in a long time. Growing up in North Carolina, the pork rinds I had were super salty and I like these a lot better. Plus there's no antibiotics and um, my husband tried one for the first time. He got the barbecue flavor and it was really nice actually that the barbecue flavor was just spices and not sugar. So there wasn't any added sugar. It was just the spices and I usually don't get barbecue for that reason because it's almost always loaded with sugar. But these were actually really good. It's by a brand called Epic, I think. Like a health food brand. Okay. So, um, we, uh, he was so nice enough to go down with me. Um, I mean, the Scottish, stopping at the Scottish pub and getting Scottish food was a total incentive for him. Um, I ended up getting the goldenrod color in Mountain Mohair. So this is Mountain Mohair, it's worsted weight, um, and it's 30% mohair, 70% wool, uh, 58 grams, 140 yards. And I really, really love this yarn. There's, um, I, I like the mohair in it a lot. I like the feel of this yarn. It is super soft. Um, there's absolutely no prickle or itch factor whatsoever. It's extremely soft. And um, I love the color. I just love this color. So I really hemmed and hawed over what color to pick. They have, I think, I don't. I could be wrong, but I feel like they have the most color selection for Mountain Mohair. Maybe it's one of their more popular yarns. Um, I, I'm not really sure, but they have a lot of colors to choose from for this. And I have really been pushing myself to not buy the same color over and over again. Um, I just noticed that I have um, a, a massive amount of uh, purple and red purple, blue purple, all the different shades. I really love deep dark purples, um, whether it's a, a really dark violet purple or whether it's a really dark red purple. And I've been lately, the last year or two, leaning towards that really dark red purple, more of a burgundy color. Um, and I just love that color, but I have too much of it. And um, it's to the point where it's like, do I want to wear this burgundy shirt, this burgundy shirt, or this burgundy shirt? So um, I kind of realized that I need to start buying some other colors. <laughs> um, so I was trying to decide what colors to pick. I was kind of torn between a pink, um, which is terribly close to, to too close um, to burgundy. And then um, there was this kind of minty blue, it's called ice blue, but it had a little bit of green to it. And um, because they dye the wool um, slightly different colors or different colors and then blend it together. So there's actually different shades of yellow in here. I think there's more of a sunshine yellow and more of a orangey yellow, and then it gets blended together. And I don't know what happened, but there are random spots of lime green in here, like really, really random. I'll show you um, 
maybe on the project. They're not really that noticeable when you knit them, but somewhere on here I saw one of them. There was like a spot of, oh there it is. See that little speck of green? I've noticed that in each skein there's been one or two specks every now and then of green. <laughs> um, but, so I talked myself out of the pink and then I felt like the blue was pretty, but it just wasn't like calling to me. And so I ended up picking the yellow because it was just like the color that I kept coming back to and the color that I wanted the most. I actually really looked at um, a, a kind of a sherbet orange that they have too, but it's called Daylily. But it looked too, too sherbet orange and not... I wanted more of a punchier orange, like a more of a vibrant orange, um, like a bright pumpkin-y orange, um, uh, not a rusty color orange like my other cardigan, but um, like a bright. Anyways, so um, I just kept coming back to this color and I couldn't put it down and I couldn't talk myself out of getting yellow and I just thought a bright happy yellow cardigan would be so um, nice like a little ray of sunshine. So um, I got seven skeins of Mountain Mohair and I cast on the same night. We got home, um, I couldn't cast on uh, on the road because <laughs> I had to skein the, um, well, I was reasonable and on the way down I brought my gloves, my glove that I'm knitting and I brought um, my um, host cardigan and I picked up the sleeve for the host cardigan on the way back and on the way down I finished the portion of the glove that I've got done so I felt good about like getting some work done on my other projects uh, but when I got home I immediately um, after like sharing um, <laughs> my yarn on um, Instagram I um, caked up two skeins okay so I um I've gotten <laughs> pretty far already. Um, so this morning I was enjoying my coffee and I was finishing up um, getting to the place where you divide for the sleeves. And I'm using these little um, stitch holders. I think they're by Addy and I bought them a few years ago. They are um, quite handy but they, you can't try the sweater or cardigan on when you use these. Um, your arm's just not going to fit through that. So um, I, I like to use it to, to divide initially when I'm just um, dividing and casting on new stitches for the gap. But then once I get to the point where I'm ready to start trying it on, I will slip it on to either needles or waste yarn um, so that I can try it on. So, yeah, I just barely finished. I have a few rows past um, splitting for the sleeves and casting on the, to span the gap. And I recorded a video on how I did that, um, or a few little videos that I'm going to string together. I recorded them vertically, which I know is a no-no, but um, I just didn't want to deal with the time that it would take to get something to attach my phone um, to something that would hold it vertically. So I just um, I, I filmed it vertically. And um, <laughs> so <laughs> um, if you want to check those out, I will put those at the end of the video. Um, I think most of you, or maybe many of you, if you've knit, sweaters and cardigans, um, top down, you've probably divided for the sleeves. A lot of times it calls for a backwards loop cast on, um, and I've done it. I've done backwards, backward loop cast on a number of times. It's easy to cast on, but I find that it's fiddly and, um, I don't always like it as much as, um, you know, a different, a different cast on that is easier to knit into. So what I just did was recorded a few minutes of um, how I cast on those extra stitches to span the gap between the front and the back. Um, 
So if you want to stick around to the end, you can check that out. Uh, <laughs> I, I regret kind of like, I wanted to get to the point where I had slipped this off onto waste yarn and um, knit long enough past this this cast on that I would feel comfortable trying it on. I'd like to add probably at least another inch before I try it on. Um, so yeah, I can't, I can't put it on for you, but I think you can get the, the general idea. Uh, so I'm pretty much following the pattern as written, but I did decide to add a steak so that I'm not having to purl and yeah. I said with my Seferl, I did the same thing. The pattern does not call for a steak. I just added one and it's super duper easy to do. I just, I do regret not starting it a little bit closer to the top because I was doing short row shaping in this, in this area up here. And then I waited until after I was done with the short row shaping um, to think about adding the steak. But in hindsight, I probably would have done it a lot sooner. Um, so all I did was I added five stitches. Um, you could use backward loop cast on, or you could use the same method that I'll show in the end of the video, like basically knitting on stitches. Um, so I knit, um, or I cast on two purl, two stitches for a purl ridge and three knit stitches in between. And the purl ridge, if you don't know, helps um, to have that purl ridge next to the um, the body stitches, it helps it to fold in when you cut it. Uh, it naturally kind of wants to fold back for you. So that's often why there are purl ridges there. Um, and it helps also, like, it's a very obvious... Uh, I don't have any stitch markers on here for the, for the steak. Um, I can just... So far, I haven't flown by it, but <clears throat> um, typically, I, when I get to a pr the purl stitch, um, if I'm about to accidentally pass by it, I can kind of feel, and I think when I was a newer knitter, I didn't really understand this, but it feels different when you try to knit a purl stitch than when you try to knit a knit stitch. <laughs> that sounds funny, but it's, I think other knitters will know that's true. So yeah, I have just been flying. Okay, so a lot of reasons why this is flying. I'm using size 10 and a half needles. I was so surprised I actually had to go up um, needle sizes. Usually I have to go down needle sizes, but lately um, I've actually been finding, and I don't know if it's because, the you know, it depends on if the designers are continental knitters or if they're English um, knitters, but English style knitters, but um, yeah, I have just been um, noticing that I've been going up needle sizes, which I don't know, I guess your gauge changes over time, but these are t US 10 and a half needles, and um, I think I'm going to use a US maybe nine for the, for the ribbing. And these are like the largest needles I've used in a really, really long time. Um, I'm so used to knitting with ones and zeros all the time or one and a half needles, especially for um, like socks and mittens and the gloves and um, my Shetland Color Work project is knit with a super fine needle. But um, these are, well, they're really nice because um, the yarn is thick and the needles are thick. So, of course, it's just flying. The same, the same size um, garment made with lace weight or fingering weight would take so much longer. So I guess I'm just enjoying that and I had just, I think last episode I had talked about how I really stay away from heavy thick yarns and um, because I don't I don't like heavier weight heavier weights. I feel like they make me feel too hot. 
Um, I like lighter pieces. But this is a, this mountain mohair is a single, um, a singles yarn. So it's really quite lightweight. Um, it's not, this, this doesn't weigh that much. It's pretty lightweight for the thickness that it is. And if you look really carefully at the construction of the yarn, and sometimes the stitches on the needle kind of flare out a little bit, and it looks like they, the mill, Green Mountain Spinnery, must have spun, I've seen those little round, um, very kind of fat bobbins. Um, I'm getting like a little fluff on my face. Um, <clears throat> I think they must have taken and, and kind of spun three of those together because when you, when you untwist it a little bit, it does look like, um, you know, there are three strands that were being, um, spun into, into one, just very softly spun, very similar to Lopi. Okay. Well, um, that's it for my knitting projects. <laughs> and I also want to share this yarn that I picked up while I was there. I had seen this on Instagram from them and I knew like I was probably interested in getting one of these even though I have absolutely no plans for it whatsoever. Um, and there wasn't actually a lot of this color left. I wonder, and I might have got the last one of, or there maybe there was two left. But there wasn't a lot left of this color, um, this blend of color. So this is Ragtime, and it's a DK weight. It's 100% wool, uh, fine wool. It's got a dry, it's soft, but it's dry. Um, I don't know what the wool that goes into it. It's probably Targi, because they use a lot of Targi. But... Um, it's it's got a, a dry feel to it, not a not a silky. Um, and they I don't um, know the exact process of how they they do these these blends of color. It's very reminiscent of like a hand spinner that um, would spin a braid of um, you know hand dyed roving or comb top. Um, but the, the repeats of the color are really long, so it's not like it's constantly changing. It's a very gradual shift, I guess. Um, they had a couple of samples of different things created with this. They had a crochet um, granny, uh, a half granny square shawl. That was actually really cute. Um, but I was thinking this would be a really nice... Um, as color work for some kind of, um, you know, I, I, either dark black or a very, very dark color, whatever the color, whether it's like navy or something, um, or the opposite, like a white um, background color, and then just have this be the color work. And instead of, so for example, like a fern and feather, um, I have a fern and feather um, sweater. So uh, that that kind of idea, Fern and Feather by Jennifer Stein um, Gass, that kind of idea. I don't think I'll be making another one of those. I mean, maybe. Actually, that would be pretty if I could uh, make it a cardigan. I, don't, I, I just don't want to knit sweaters right now. I just only want to knit cardigans. If it doesn't open in the front, then I don't want to knit it. <laughs> and I keep thinking like, you know, maybe I shouldn't have a sweater, but I like the ability to um, have it be easy to take on and off. If I, you know, get it warm, I can just take it off instead of feeling like I'm having to, um, I don't know, layer as much. I don't know. Does that make any sense? But I think this will be really pretty. Um, and I'm leaning towards um, using it with white um, instead of black. I think it would be pretty with white. But black would be pretty too. Black or a dark, dark gray maybe. Um, and have it just fade through the different colors. I know there are a lot of other new patterns out for 
um, color work that would probably be good for it. I think what I'll do is I'll go to Ravelry and I will search color work and DK patterns and do some other filtering. Um, but I do want to try other designers too. The one reason why I'm trying to stay away from Jennifer Steingast is because I have so many of her patterns. I've knit quite a few of her designs and I just want to try other designers out and a lot of her stuff is, although it's different, it's very, very similar. Um, and I just want to branch out and try new things. So do you have any ideas that um, are DK patterns that would work for that kind of idea that are not, not nothing against Jennifer Steingast. I love her stuff. It's just, I've had a lot of it and I've bought a lot of it and I've made a few of her patterns. So um, something different than that. And pretty simple too, like it would just be the two colors. It would be this color and then the other one. Not, I don't want to do like three or four colors. It would just be like white background or dark background and then this. <clears throat> um, so I pulled out this old hand spun. This is from a Jacob fleece that I um, bought. This was my first Shave em to Save em project that I bought and it's what got me into the Save em to Shave em initiative and um, you can search that on Google if you don't know what that is but it's for spinners or knitters to support a lot of rare or endangered breeds um, and you become a member and you get a passport and you try to work your way through um, all of these different sheep breeds whether you are spinning or you are knitting you can do either, you could do both. I think I'm primarily just gonna do spinning because that's kind of my jam. <laughs> but um, this, I'm watching my cat play with a ladybug. We have, some people have like all different kinds of bugs. My grandmother used to get um, stink bugs really bad in North Carolina. And you know, some people get like ants really bad. We get ants in the summer sometimes. You know, whatever, everybody gets some kind of critter that tries to get into the house. We have ladybugs, like a ridiculous amount of ladybugs every single year. And they're up in our, we have a window way up there and they are crawling all over the window and they do this every single year. They find their way into the house and then they try and sneak back out. <laughs> so I was thinking that this yarn might make um, a really nice Felix too. And before I went and bought this, I was actually looking at this yarn first, um, but I was worried that it wouldn't be heavy enough. So this white is absolutely perfect. Um, if all of them were exactly like this white one, it would be absolutely perfect. But <clears throat> I spun this yarn a while back and I think it was before I got my new wheel. I don't think, I think I only had my Lindrum at the time. Um, but these browns, um, some of them, there are spots that are just not as thick. I think you can see that. Um, this brown might be a little bit, dark brown might be a little bit better. I've got two of the dark brown and one of this lighter brown. The two dark browns together are a little bit less than this medium kind of light brown. So these are not quite as consistently chunky as this white one. And I think the reason for that was um, this was the last one that I spun and so I was getting really accustomed to spinning chunkier. And um, although I can almost without thinking spin a fine lace weight yarn. I really struggle to spin heavier weights um, without like plying to get the heavier weight. If I had plied to get the heavier weight, it would have been easier, but spinning just a single um, without plying for this kind of chunkier um, worsted weight, um, it's just, challenging when you're used to spinning really fine all the time. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this. I might look for maybe a DK pattern because I don't want it to look too, um, I don't want it to look too hand spun where I've got 
you know, really thin sections and really chunky sections. If I knit it at a finer gauge than what the Felix cardigan calls for, if I find a different pattern, um, then maybe it would look a little bit better. Um, but yeah, I, it's really beautiful. Jacob, it's extremely soft. It is just luscious. I bought this last spring and at New Hampshire Sheep and Wool Festival, and I'm so excited to go to New Hampshire Sheep and Wool Festival again. I love their fleeces that they have available at the in the judging and fleece barn. They just seem to have a really great selection of fleeces, so um, I will definitely be there. If I can be there, I will be there um, this, for this coming New Hampshire Sheep and Wool Festival. But yeah, I would like to find something for this. I have a lot more of this white. I have a lot more of what this way. I think I have three bats ready to be spun. They've just been sitting around for ages. Um, and so I could do a fade from the darkest to the lightest, I think. If I did a top down, I would do a fade from the darkest to all white at the bottom. And I think, excuse me, I think that would be pretty. Okay, so that's it for um, that. I have a little bit of fleece talk to talk about. Um, so I have, I now have six fleeces from the same Shetland farm, um, Nadine and her husband, um, Gary, I think I'm saying, I think it's Gary, <laughs> um, Nadine, a painted wool farm. I only got to talk to her husband a little bit. Um, uh, I mostly talked to Nadine. Uh, I, we drove over for their sheep shearing, um, they do it once a year, and it was freezing cold. I think the high was zero degrees Fahrenheit, and um, we were freezing our butt off, like, all morning. Um, we got there, and they were already shearing, and Nadine was, you know, kindly put out um, hot cider and cookies, and I didn't have any cookies, but my husband had a bunch of them. And we just enjoyed, like getting to see the sheep shearing. They, they had the ewes in one barn and then they had the rams in another barn. And one of the rams was getting really cranky. And we went over to the rams, there was like, we thought it was cold. We went into the barn with the ewes and then we went over there to see the rams. And um, and the that barn, it was their horse barn um, was, there was no protection from the cold. It was much colder over there. So, um, <laughs> it was still super fun though. Um, and the rams were kept in the horse stalls, um, for the shearing. And one of the, the rams that they have, his name is Donk, which is short for Donkey Kong. And I kept calling him Donkey Kong cause, um, I like that. But Donk, um, is one of her, um, breeding rams that, uh, he's this lovely Moret chocolatey brown, dark or medium dark brown. And anyways, he was like ramming the stall and it was gearing up and ramming the stall and it was so loud and so jarring. It made all of us just jump out of our skin. And the shearer was saying like, um, this is making me kind of jumpy. <laughs> and I think he was so worried about having to shear this guy too when he got to him at the end having to shear him and then he was just fine <laughs> he's this big guy with really big horns and um yeah so I bought two fleeces uh, I bought a ram's fleece and I bought a used fleece and the ram I'll show you first this is um this really beautiful gray this is a dark gray. It's kind of looking black, but it's not. It's dark gray uh, and medium gray and some even light gray, to, and there were white spots too. And I actually have a pretty photo of this fleece. Um, well, a photo of the fleece and the fleece is pretty. <laughs> um, uh, although this is the color that I wanted and there wasn't any other fleeces available with these colors that I really wanted. Um, so that's primarily why I bought it, um, is because I really, really, really wanted these shades of gray because I've used all of th these, these, this shade of gray 
and all of the other fleeces, Shetland fleeces that I purchased. So I really wanted to have these colors available for color work. So that means I had pretty much one choice um, when it came to fleeces um, with these colors. There were some U's that were uh, had some of this gray, but mo they were almost mostly white. And I just wanted a lot more gray. So um, I'm saying all of this because this fleece isn't um, all that great. Um, number one, it is very, very, very smelly. It's a very strong, pungent. It is probably the most like musky male scent um, that I've smelled on a fleece. Um, so that's one thing. Like even after washing, it still smells quite strong. Um, it's like must, like like a like a pheromone kind of must. So yeah, I sorted it into these two major sections, and I started combing it up a little bit. And the I've just initially started combing it, um, but I think I'm gonna end up having to blend this even further. I might put it on the drum carter, the, especially yeah these because they just they have such a variation um, from lighter gray to darker gray and if I really want a nice mixed color then I'll have to do something like that um, so that was one issue is that it's smelly but I can look past that the other issue is that the tips are not the greatest um, and I knew that when I bought the fleece because I was right there looking at the fleece and I knew that the tips were a little bit, um, I think the word is caught, coddled, cotted, something like that. Um, and they're kind of weak, so they break off really easy. Um, and you really don't want to leave that in your yarn. So what I've been doing when I've combed a little bit of this is I have been cutting off the tips. <clears throat> so I will just um, take a lock and cut off the tips and then put it on the combs or I could load up combs and then take the scissors and just cut off the tips um, and that's not uncommon especially for younger fleeces like lambs fleeces this is very 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 typical um, but this the 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 not matting but it's like it's it's like a the tips are very stuck together and they're weak and brittle and um, you don't want to leave them in your yarn. They break off too easily. And they would cause little neppy, junky looking yarn and you just don't want that. So <clears throat> I will be cutting all of these tips off as I process them. Um, and that's pretty much the case for the whole fleeces like that. So that's the Rams fleece that I got and that was the gray is Condor. So his name is Condor. Beautiful color. I hope his fleece changes if they keep him that his fleece changes um, as he gets older because I think he's a hogget. He's not he's not a lamb anymore, but he's he's not two yet. I don't know. Okay, so the other fleece that I got is Cersei and Cersei is almost all white and um, I washed up a lot of her wool and her wool is really, really long. This isn't even the longest section here. Um, and it's it's got some different qualities, as most Shetlands do. I didn't pull out any of the center back because it's the center back was a lot shorter, which is typical, um, and much, much crimpier, and it wasn't as nice in the center for some reason. So, yeah, I sorted a lot of this um, longer stapled wool from Cersei's Fleece, and I washed a whole bunch of it. And you can see pretty clearly that it has a double coat. So what do I mean by double coat is I mean these long, thin... Um, so you've got this big fluffy bit at the bottom, and then you've got these long, thin... Um, hairs coming out of the top. So these, this is a double coat. 
These are longer, coarser hairs that are very typical in double-coated Shetlands, and this is exactly what you would see in, a, in an Icelandic fleece, because Icelandics are very closely related to Shetlands. They're like cousins or something. They came from the same ancestors, roughly. So I have been actually separating a lot of this double coat just by hand pulling it out. Um, and I've been keeping a pile of this coarser wool. And I'll show you that. So here's this pile of coarser guard hairs that I've been keeping. And when I say coarse, these aren't actually that, that coarse as far as like itchy or scratchy. They're just long and they have a thicker micron uh, count and they're not soft and wooly like the downy inside. I could probably still wear this next to skin. It would have to have extremely low twist, but this doesn't, this doesn't feel itchy at all. So anyways, that's the double coated part. So once you remove the double coat, then you're left with the finer undercoat. So this fleece, um, although I would say in general is a little bit better quality than the condors, than condors, um, because of the tips and everything and the smell. <laughs> um, but this one has issues too. Um, you know, not everybody wants a double coated fleece, but I don't, it's not a big deal. I can just separate out the, the outer coat. I can save this for something else. This would um, add strength to a pair of socks or um, mittens or something. Something that you wanted to be more um, resistant to abrasion. So this isn't as soft as condors, but um, it's going to be easy to it's easier to comb because it doesn't have the tips that I have to worry about cutting. Um, and it's it's really consistent overall. It's all roughly like six and a half, seven inches long. Um, and it's really nice. It's much more of a medium feeling softness. Um, it's not a it's not as soft as condors, but it's still very soft, I think. Um, and because of the length and because it's um, not as fine, it, I will want to spin this very loosely and have very little twist in this. So here's a little teeny sample that I spun on my drop spindle, that one right there. And um, I tend to do that when I get something new, a new fleece. Um, I like to just make a bunch of little fun samples, spin it up a little bit. So this is a, a little crocheted piece from the yarn that I spun. And I just tied the extra yarn into a little bow. But I crocheted this little, little double crochets. It was quite a fine yarn. You see it's not very thick. The crochet is much thicker than knitting. So it was quite a fine little yarn. And I really like the way this feels. It's um, it's soft, but it also feels very strong, and it's got a little bit of luster to it. So, um, oh, the only, the last thing I'm going to say about this, um, I really wanted a white fleece to have um, for color work to make, you know, if I wanted to have like a white sweater or use a lot of white for a sweater. The only problem with this is that some of the spots have quite the canary stain. That's mostly dirt, not canary stain. There was a spot somewhere on here that had a bit of canary stain. Was it on this one? No, I'm not going to be able to find it. There's a teeny bit there. There are some spots on this fleece, especially around where, oh, there it is. Especially around where the, the dirt was that are just slightly stained yellow. I hope you can see what I'm talking about right there. So it's not that bad, but overall it will add a little tint of yellow to the yarn. Um, so I might try and sort out the spots that are very, because there are spots that are even more yellow than what I just showed you. So I might try to sort those into the 
sections that are really yellow and maybe save that for dyeing and then sort out this that's mostly white and I'll just use that for the white wool keep it natural I've got somehow I've got um, locks and wool all over the place here's here's a little bit of Circe's white Shetland that I combed so here you can see the three stages there's lock combed crocheted <laughs> I kind of want to crochet another blanket, by the way. This is totally off topic, but I kind of want to have a crochet blanket for like a hand spun crochet blanket um, or afghan. One for um, one for our bedroom and one for our living room because I tend to carry my um, my blanket back and forth a lot. So if I want to snuggle on the couch, I'll go grab my um, my hand spun great granny square project. I haven't shown it in a long time, but I will go grab it and bring it over here to the couch. And then when I go to bed, I bring it back in with me as I always have to have it. <laughs> um, okay. Last thing I think I'm going to talk about not knitting related. So I read a physical book <laughs> for the first time in ages. I've always loved reading. Um, and when I was a middle school student, I think I found this series by Garth Nix. Um, so this is the Ab Horson series and, um, or the Old Kingdom series, but I think of it as the Ab Horson series, but, um, the Old Kingdom series, and this is his latest book in the series, and it came out years after the originals, the, the first book. Um, so I have loved this series for a really, really long time. There's just something about it that has, um, stuck with me. Um, like almost, you know, like as much as I loved Harry Potter, I also really, really loved this series. So, um, both of my spinning wheels, a lot of people name their spinning wheels. Both of my spinning wheels are named after characters in this series. And, um, he came up with three books initially and then years later came out with a kind of backstory prequel to the series and I sort of loved it, but I also was very angry about what happened and about the character and it, it's kind of the story about one of the villains and why she was a villain and how she became a villain but I just wasn't buying into the fact that this, what was a very, you know, kind, good, sweet person had a series of sort of terrible things that happened to her. And she ends up becoming the, one of these most evil characters. I just wasn't buying it. Like the story didn't convince me that she was going to turn into this really evil thing. And I was like, irrationally angry about it like really really angry so a little bit later a few years I don't remember how far apart the books were but he came out with this book and I felt like I had been a little bit burned by the last one which was Clarial um, was the last one before that right before this and I wasn't sure if I wanted to read it because I was afraid like it was gonna mess with my feelings about the original three books. Um, but having read it, I loved it. I have no complaints. In fact, I, I binge read this thing. I couldn't put it down. It's like all I did, there was one day on vacation where all I did was read. <laughs> um, and I just really, really loved it. And I am actually kind of upset that there's, um, no talk of, um, a book to follow this. So there's a lot of things that happen in this story that kind of wrap up, um, some things that have been going on, but at the same time, there are new, new situations that you want to find out what happens. And, um, yeah. So I actually was surprised because one of the characters in this book, I didn't like that much and I remember feeling like why are you putting those two characters together I don't like that character 
but after reading this I really did and I felt different and plus there was a there's a big age difference between when I was reading it um and now so maybe that's affected it but um anyways I really love this series if you're into fantasy fiction it's the Old Kingdom series the first book is Sabriel I think it's Sabriel, Abhorse, and Lyriel, and then Clariel, and then Golden Hand. And Golden Hand it follows Lyriel. So um, <clears throat> the two two big big characters in this series are Sabriel and Lyriel, and they are related. And I, well, I won't go into details. If you're interested, I just sort of spoiled some of the earlier books, but um, it's. A great series and I highly recommend it. So on the same kind of theme of books, I recently found out about the um, Libby app. So it's L-I-B-B-Y and it looks like that right there. And yes, my screen is a photo of my hand spun Shetland. <laughs> um, so the Libby app is through your library and I don't know if they have this in other countries but it's certainly they have it in the US so all you need is a library card and you need to know I think the last four digits of your library card number um, and then you're able to create a Libby account and borrow books um, and audiobooks to read or listen to on your phone for free um, the only downside is that you don't you won't necessarily be able to get them right away like if you have a book that you want to um read or listen to you might have to wait um anywhere from 2 to 40 weeks <laughs> there's a book that i found that had a massive wait list to it um which was the uh is the witcher series which they came out with um some some videos on they they did like a TV series I'm getting kind of cold they did um, like a TV series on Netflix and so I think that's why it's super popular but they have two books available to listen to and um, I thought oh that might be fun but it has a massive wait list it's like I, I want to say it was like no it wasn't like 40 weeks let me look because you can go to your library and you can go to your shelf and you can see things that you've put on hold. Okay, so here's two books that I have on hold. This is Children of Blood and Bone, um, which I have on a six-week hold. Okay, and then the... Is this the first one? I hope this is the first one. Anyways, it's Blood of Elves and it's part of the Witcher series. Um, and I've reserved the audiobooks so that I can listen to books while I knit because I, I can't read and knit. That's why I was saying I read this a physical book for the first time in a long time. As, even though I love reading, I, I like knitting too and I can't do both at the same time. So anyways, that's the Libby app and um, some of you might already know about it, but I apparently was living under a rock and <laughs> didn't know about it. Um, so, you know, Audible is nice um, if you're willing to pay for it you can get whatever you want as soon as you want it right away but if you want to save some money the Libby app is nice you just might have to wait to read or listen to the book that you're interested in well, that's it for today thank you for stopping by this video is not as short as I intended it to be they it never works out I'm always like I'm gonna make this short it's gonna be 30 minutes and I'm just gonna do this and this and that I'll be done <laughs> all right um, I'll see you guys next time, maybe around spring break. Um, so yeah, maybe in the spring, um, maybe after I go to New Hampshire Sheep and Wool Festival. I have to look up when that is. Um, all right, I'll see you next time. Bye. Okay, I wanted to show how I'm dividing the sleeves for my Felix cardigan. So if I just show you real quick, I have... Um, the back side of the cardigan. I'll try and hold this back a little bit. Um, here's the front of the cardigan. I've added a steak. So there's the front. There's the opening for the front. I started the steak a little bit lower, but that's okay. Um, 
so this is the front side. I've already finished um, taking the stitches for the sleeve and putting them on the sleeve holder and I've cast on the stitches to span the gap um, between the front and the back side. And I did it a little bit differently this time. I just thought I would record what I did and um, maybe talk about why I'm doing it. And I don't know if it's the best way, but it's what I'm trying and I thought I would at least share that. So here we go. I am on to the second sleeve. And all I simply did was I got to the point where I had two markers marking the sleeve and I took the first one off and then took this handy dandy sleeve um, stitch holder and slipped using this, just slipped all of these stitches onto here. When I was done, I close it and that holds that out of the way for me. You can put the um, stitches on a piece of yarn, a contrast color yarn, um, but you can see hopefully there is the sleeve. Uh, these are nice though, I bought them a few years ago and um, I like having them, I like using the yarn when I wanna try it on, but when I'm just, you know, quickly trying to um, divide the sleeves, these are nice um, and quick. Okay, so I'm at the point where I've slipped all of the stitches off and I'm ready to cast on some stitches to span the gap. Um, a lot of times um, it's called for to um, use a backwards loop cast on. So hold on, let me make sure this is in frame. Okay, use a backwards loop cast on, which is like that and it's really quick and easy to do. <clears throat> and I've used it a few times, but I find that I don't enjoy um, knitting into it. When I go, I'm on, I'm on the point where I've cast on, I've knit around, I'm back to that point, and I go to knit into it, it's fussy and I don't love it. So I'm just putting on a stitch marker to mark where I'm casting on um, stitches, and then I'm actually gonna turn this around and I was playing around a little bit with different ways to cast on stitches. So first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take the yarn and I'm going to put it to the back. So I'm gonna take the yarn and put it to the back of the work. And uh, just for this first one, I am going to take this left hand side of this stitch below the one on the needle, and I'm going to pick up that and then I am going to pull this working yarn through so that it twists that stitch. And then I'm gonna take the yarn and I'm going to put it on the needle. And from here on, I'm just gonna pick up the, this, uh, like I'm gonna knit into the stitch and just knit on the required number of stitches. And this pattern calls for knitting um, a certain amount and then placing a center stitch. And so I'm gonna do that. And then I'm gonna show you what the, the front side looks like. Okay. So I've got a point where I'm gonna mark the center. And now I'm going to add the remaining stitches. So I've cast on the stitches correctly and I'm ready to um, turn this around. So I just want to show you, I you, you do not have to put markers um, marking the ends in the center, um, but I, and then this one, they didn't even tell you to mark the center, but I'm gonna leave it anyways. Um, but the beginning and the end, at least for now, it's nice to have that, that marked. And I really like these in here I have, um, just some little rings that are used for jewelry and I use these an absolute ton and they were really inexpensive, maybe a few dollars for a big bag of them. Not the green ones, the green ones are, um, are different. But anyways, these little metal jump rings, I use a lot. So I'm gonna turn these around. So I'm back to the right side. And now you can see I've got the sleeve stitches, I've got the stitches that I've knit to span the gap between. Here's the back over here, here's the front over here. 
And now I'm ready to just knit into um, the the front body cardigan of the of the cardigan. So um, one thing that I noticed um, when I was doing this for the other sleeve is that if I just knit into this, I've got let's try and move this out of the way. I've got this large hole here and that uh, isn't too ideal. So um, what I thought I would just do is just twist the stitch by knitting into the back loop. So instead of knitting into the front loop, knitting into the back loop, the back strand. And then when I knit that and pull that down, it twists that stitch right there. And um, it just looks a little bit neater and not doesn't have quite the big gap there that um, it would have if I had just did a, a plain knit stitch and not a twisted knit stitch. So let's look at this now. We've got the cast on stitches, there's the sleeve stitches, and um, they look pretty good, I think. Uh, it's a little bit thicker uh, than this, this ridge right here will be a little bit thicker than a backwards loop cast on. There's more yarn here. But when I go to knit the next round, they're just going to be nice and easy to knit into um, and not quite as fussy as I find the backwards loop cast on to be. So I hope this um, was interesting to watch. You know, I, I don't... Um, I think I just like to tr kind of experiment with different things, and I don't know if these are um, y recommended anywhere else or if anybody does these these little tricks. But um, yeah, let me know if you find that interesting or if you've tried anything similar or different or uh, if you have any recommendations for separating, dividing, and um, separating for sleeves, what you... What do you do? All right.